In this unit, we will be discussing about evolutionism as one of the theories of social and cultural anthropology. Evolution may be defined as a continuous process in which different forms are produced or developed orderly in a system. Cultural evolution may be defined as a continuous process by which different successive forms in socio-cultural institutions or culture of mankind as a whole are developed and accumulated to constitute the growth of culture over different periods of time. The intellectual atmosphere of the Enlightenment and 18th century philosophical movement that stressed social progress based on human reason and Darwin's theory of evolution led to the emergence of modern anthropology. It was Edward B. Tyler, a 19th century British scholar, who first tried to develop a theory of societal evolution. His approach is known as unilineal evolution. Other unilineal evolutionists include Morgan, Merritt, Henry Summer Main, Beckofen, and others. The basic assumptions of 19th century evolutionists, such as unilineal sequences, parallel inventions, and psychic unity of mankind, deal with unilineal cultural evolution. In this evolutionary scheme, it is postulated that culture or cultures of world pass through different successive developmental stages in continuity. Now let us take a look at the typology of cultural evolution. American anthropologist Julian Stewart, who revived evolutionary theory of culture growth in 20th century, attempted to provide a typology of cultural evolution in which the data related to cultural evolution can be placed. They are unilinear evolution, universal evolution, multilineal evolution. In this unit, we are going to discuss about unilinear evolution. Let us check the basic postulates of unilinear evolution. Unilineal evolution is the view that societies evolve in a single direction towards complexity, progress and civilization. According to the unilineal evolutionists, the primitive or tribal societies of mankind were ancestors of modern civilized societies of the universe. The former represented the earlier stage of humanity through which the civilized mankind as a whole had evolved out. Although their evolutionary schemes were speculative to a great extent, but they were aware of the facts and explanation of the processes of change. As it was difficult to show the evolution of mankind in the absence of written records, they developed the concept of survivals. Thus, Survivals acted as indicators to show that such societies have passed through earlier stages whose customs in vestigial form appear in their present ways of life. The postulate that the history of mankind represents a unilinear sequence of institutions and beliefs, the similarities between which as discerned at the present time, reflect the principle of the psychic unity of man. The evolutionists assumed that due to the psychic unity of man, human beings residing at different places of the world passed through similar stages of savagery, barbarism and civilization. The invention of agriculture, 
use of zero and invention of paper are some examples of cultural parallels which prove the psychic unity of man. The evolutionists use the comparative method. In this method, the evolutionary sequence of human institutions and beliefs is to be established by comparing their manifestations among existing people who are assumed to be the living exponents of earlier stages of culture through which the more advanced societies are held to have passed. And now, let us examine the contributions of the British evolutionists. Edward Tyler, a 19th century British scholar, assumed that because all humans are bestowed with innate rational faculties, they are continuously improving their societies. Through this process of evolution, societies move towards progress and civilization. Tyler published a major work titled Primitive Culture in 1871. Tyler used accounts from Western observers to compare certain cultural elements from different societies including technology, family, economy, political organization, art, religion and philosophy to arrive at his conclusions. Then he organized this evidence into categories or stages, ranging from what he termed savagery to barbarism to civilization. Theorists like Tyler assumed that hunter-gatherers and other non-Western societies were living at a lower level of existence than were the civilized societies of Europe. Henry Summer Maine, an English jurist, took a different view of social evolution. Maine's primary interest was in the evolution of law and the sequence he suggested was a continuum rather than a series of stages. Organization on the basis of kinship evolved into organization on the basis of territoriality, status into contract, inalienable land to saleable land and civil law to criminal law. John F. MacLennan, a Scottish attorney, was fascinated by evolutionary ideas regarding marriage. According to him, an early stage of group promiscuity resulted in matrilineal descent. During the early stages, female infanticide must have been common, leading to scarcity of women. This was resolved by bright capture and polyandry. The practice of a woman living with a group of brothers, that is fraternal polyandry, then resulted in patrilineal descent reckoning. Sir James Fraser never did any fieldwork and is often exemplified as the typical armchair anthropologist. He proposed a three-stage evolutionary sequence from magic to religion to science. Among the American evolutionists, mention may be made of Morgan. Morgan speculated that humans originally lived in primitive hordes in which sexual behavior was not regulated and individuals did not know who their fathers were. He postulated that brother-sister marriage then developed, followed by group marriage and eventually a matriarchal family structure in which women held economic and political power. Morgan believed that the final stage of the evolution of the family began when males took control of the economy and politics instituting a patriarchal system. Morgan, like Tyler, surveyed technological, economic, political and religious conditions throughout the world 
in addition to exploring the evolution of the family. His book, Ancient Society, presented his overall scheme of the evolution of society. Among the German evolutionists, Johann Jacob Beckhoffen developed the theory that matrilineal societies must have existed universally during a primeval period of sexual promiscuity. He assumed that under free sexual activity, no one could be certain of his father's identity. As a consequence, he reasoned that there must have been an early period of mother right or matriarchy which was replaced in a later period when men became eager to pass on their property to their children. That eagerness prompted men to overthrow mother right and institute patriarchy instead with strict monogamous marriage. Adolf Bastian, a German trained in law, medicine and science, was impressed by similar customs among widely separated places and attempted to account for them. By psychic unity of mankind, he implied that all humans had the same psychic or mental processes that produced similar responses to similar stimuli, but which appeared as local variants in response to differing local conditions. Bastian thought that psychic unity caused the kind of independent but similar manifestations that others might account for by the process of diffusion. According to him, diffusion operated only in the more advanced societies, not among the primitive people. He even believed that any group had the innate capacity of independent, parallel invention and might achieve civilization given the proper stimuli or conditions. Now, let us go through the positive contributions of the evolutionists. The early anthropologists in their study of culture achieved the following. They developed the concept of culture and advanced the principle that culture and race must not be confused in studying the ways of life of human societies. They distinguished those subdivisions of culture called aspects and showed the usefulness in studying culture of considering separately the problems that fall within these several subdivisions. They established the principle of continuity and the orderly development of culture, a principle that must underlie any realistic approach to the analysis of cultural dynamics. By analyzing and comparing the cultures of the universe, they have provided rich materials to cultural anthropology for further study and explorations. It cannot be denied that unilineal evolutionists tried their best to explore, analyze and understand cultural processes on the basis of their postulates and theories of evolution of cultures. But in spite of all their valuable contributions made in the field of anthropology in general and cultural and social anthropology in particular, their theories of cultural evolution have been subjected to severe criticisms. Major criticisms leveled against them are as follows. These 19th century thinkers shared the view that humanity was progressing through various stages of development. Their views were ethnocentric, contradictory and speculative, and their evidence secondhand, based on the accounts of biased Europeans. The unilineal scheme of evolution was too simplistic to account for the development of different societies. 
the doctrine of the psychic unity of man could not stand against the growing realization that human being is so conditioned that it is difficult to distinguish innate from learned behavior. Though universals exist in human culture, yet the manifestations of these universals in culture are so varied that the resemblances between the ways in which culture may be divided for purposes of study provides just a framework on which the behavior of people can be organized. The critics asserted that the psychic unity concept was obviously wrong because there was a wide range in human responses to the same situation. The unilineal evolutionists were armchair anthropologists who never visited the field for actual observation of the phenomena. They were not interested in fieldwork. They relied upon the data gathered by travelers and missionaries and never showed interest in testing the reliability of data before coming to a conclusion. Hence, they are criticized for being extreme in establishing their theory of cultural evolution. Evolutionists had largely ignored the processes of diffusion and migration of culture traits. They overlooked the fact that culture was in fact borrowed more frequently then it was invented. Culture is dynamic, not static, and culture traits diffuse or migrate from one place to another. The unilineal evolutionists, in general, relied on 19th century racist views of human development and misunderstandings of biological evolution to explain societal differences. Tyler and Morgan, for example, believed that people in various societies have different levels of intelligence. They believed that the people in so-called savage societies have less intelligence than those in civilized societies. This view of different levels of intelligence among different groups is no longer accepted by the scientific community or modern anthropologists. Nevertheless, these early anthropologists provided the first systematic methods for thinking about and explaining the similarities and diversity of human societies.